it seems probable that once the machine thinking method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble powers. They would be able to converse with each other to sharpen their wits. At some stage, therefore, we should have to expect the machines to take control. Nineteen forties. In the beginning of the 20th century, science fiction started to take on the idea of artificially developed intelligence. This also gave birth to the seed that many scientists of that time incorporated into philosophical thoughts, mathematical theories, and other scientific thought processes. Among them, young mathematician Alan Turing, who is nowadays widely known for his inventions and influence within the computer science domain. He thought about using information and reasoning methods, similar to how we could look at humans performing intelligent tasks. However, the hardware at that moment in time was not sophisticated enough in order to carry out his ambitious thoughts. Nineteen fifties. A proof of concept initially developed in the nineteen forties to determine whether machine intelligence was worth pursuing was taken on by Ellen Newell, Cliff Shaw, and Herbert Simon. The program, called Logic Theorist, intended to mimic humans' problem-solving capabilities, was presented at the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence, short DSRPAI. The project, hosted by John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky, was initiated as discussion playground for many, many scientists. Although the event did not quite meet up to the expectations of the hosts, the common agreement among the scientists was that AI as a field shows a lot of potential and should be further pursued. Due to this, the field of artificial intelligence began to flourish. Over the course of the next 20 years, AI became more and more popular and many scientists had very optimistic beliefs in its, of its future. In 1970, Marvin Minsky had even expressed that he believes that within the next three or to eight years, we will have a machine with the general intelligence of an average human being. However, the initial potential that so many people were hoping for and being optimistic about turned into a rather slow developing waiting game. In 1974, DARPA, which stands for Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, a research and development agency of the US responsible for emerging technologies, announced major cutbacks to academic AI research. With this, the so-called first AI winter started. 1980s. Artificial intelligence managed to survive the long-lasting cold of its first winter mainly due to the expansion of available algorithms and boost of funds. On one hand, John Hopfield and David Rommelhardt popularized algorithms that allowed computers to learn by using experience. On the other side of AI, Edward Feigenbaum introduced the world to expert systems, which aimed at mimicking how a human expert would make decisions. Unfortunately, the reignited hype and passion for the newly developed AI methods also did not meet up to its expectations. In 1987, the market for expert systems collapsed, followed, again, by cutbacks to new funds for AI. This initiated the second major AI winter. Nineteen nineties. Even though the field of artificial intelligence struggled due to the nature of its second winter, a lot of progress in the scientific domain was achieved. In 1997, for the first time ever, the reigning world champion for chess, Gary Kasparov, was defeated by IBM's chess computer Deep Blue. But not only in the area of decision making, scientists found a lot of success, the speech recognition software of Dragon Systems was implemented on Windows. Due to the increase of computational power, following Moore's law, many machine learning algorithms could be implemented efficiently enough to be used on real-world applications. The trend continued as history tells. 
Science was working to the limits of computational power, waiting for Moore's law to catch up, pushing AI further, and so on. Additionally, as the digital age set foot in the 21st century, the available data on a vast variety of different domains increased, up to a point where we now call it big data. The combination of both increasing computational power and available data allowed the domain of artificial intelligence to keep flourishing, to a point where AI, machine learning and related terms are popular buzzwords in modern society.